Chapter 13 When the ship's horn blew, it felt as though the deep sound went inside floor and rattled around. Two more blasts came after the first. As soon as the last blast died away, Floor became aware of a low rumble. The ship's engines were running. A slow side-to-side -side rocking motion started up and sent a thrill through Flora from the tip of her snout down to the end of her tail, despite her awful quarters. They were underway. She looked around at all the supplies piled against the walls of the ship. Surrounding her was a wide space, a clear walking path to the stairs, and another path through the boxes and barrels. Close by was a food bowl. <clears throat> Flora sniffed it, spaghetti with the tomato sauce and rinds of squash. Not bad, but she'd rather explore her new environment. Unfortunately, <clears throat> Flora couldn't get farther than a few steps before she was stopped short. She walked a few more paces in the other direction until her chain pulled tight. But this time she strained against it and the chain gave. Behind her, <clears throat> excuse me, behind her, she, she heard the box she was clipped to. Good Lord, I'm stuttering. That's okay. <laughs> behind her, she heard the box she was clipped to grind against the floor. She sat down. This could get tiring. But wait, that was the point. It was supposed to be hard work. Flora had some catching up to do. Second her pinned back home, she hadn't trained nearly as much as the farm dogs. Flora pulled at her chain and heard a satisfying growl from the box scraping over the rough wooden deck decking. Her leather collar dug into her neck. Good. Sled pulling wasn't supposed to be comfortable. Too bad no one was down here to cheer her on and make sure her technique was right. Instead, a smell wrinkled her nose. It was not a good smell. She tried to shut it out. She focused on the window in the door at the top of the stairs. On that small bit of light, she strained again. Don't give up. Step, pull. Step, step, stop. As soon as Flora sat down, she heard a strange rustling again. Anybody there, she asked. Another rustle, or maybe it was more like scratching, came from behind a box. So did more of that bad smell. Flora shivered. But this was no time to be afraid, like little Alfred. She dragged her box until she couldn't peer into into a dark space. Until I'm sorry. She, That's okay. She Let's dragged. Start with, but it was no time to be yep. afraid. But it was no no time to be afraid, like little Alfred. She dragged her box until she could peer into a dark space between the cargos. <clears throat> the floor almost seemed to be moving, as if it were alive. Flora looked longingly at the stairs, and when she turned back, yikes, she hopped backwards. A big greasy rat with long wiry whiskers and a bald patch between his ears had stepped out from behind a box and was sniffing in Flora's direction. Flora tried to be brave. She tried to remember her rat hunting moves, but suddenly attacking a crumpled bag, a crumpled paper bag or a dried orange peel didn't seem like enough terrain. <clears throat> As she watched him creep closer, she worked hard. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me start that over. As she watched him creep closer, she worked hard to stop shaking so her chain wouldn't rattle. Then he stood on his hind legs and opened his mouth, showing off, showing off his impressive sharp yellow teeth. He sn snapped his mouth shut. Then he oozed in the direction of her food bowl. Flora scrambled as far away as possible and sank to her stomach. She could see him slip over the bull's edge and paddle around while ser searching out the best morsels. Evidently, he did not care that his fur was becoming soggy with tomato sauce or that this was not his food. In a moment, he was joined by two mean-looking buddies, chewing and slurping were the only only sounds. Flora imagined an ocean of rats watching, watching her from the shadows. She hid her face between her hooves. Once the food in Flora's bowl had been eaten, the rats disappeared. That was good. The light at the top of the stairs was dimming. 
night was coming. <clears throat> the rustling in the darkness seemed, seemed even louder. Flora shivered at the thought of having to listen to rat sounds all night long. The ship was bucking and pounding along. She could even feel the boards underneath. She could even feel the boards underneath her shutter. She needed to think about something cheerful. Hike, she whispered to herself, and brought the pictures to mind. The snow was a glittering blanket. Across the folds of white raced floor with the, with <clears throat> let me start that over. Hike, she whispered to herself and brought the picture to mind. The snow was a glittering blanket. Across the folds of white raced Flora the sled pig. She was galloping beside a frozen lake with a team of, of a dozen sled dogs. Oscar was in front. At the end of the line was the sled, brightly painted in, in a festive blue with white stars for decoration. Onward, called Oscar. Onward, Flora echoed. We're tough, we're brave, and we're a little bit crazy. She leaped and twisted in the air in a crazy little dance before speeding on. Even if sleep didn't come, Flora's mind was in a far better place. Hike, she murmured again and again. Chapter 14 The next morning, the door at the top of the stairs opened. Flora leaped to her feet. Captain? A sailor came down, wearing a dirty apron and holding a bucket of slops. He was a giant of a man with hair on his arms as long as Kurt. <clears throat> a sailor came down wearing a dirty apron and holding a bucket of slops. He was a giant of a man with hair on his arms as long and curly as a sheep's and a lower lip that hung open showing huge uneven teeth. The ship's cook wants to check on his bacon maker. He had a voice like the scraping sound of a shovel on cement floor. Slobber collected in the corners of his mouth as he talked. <clears throat> Time for eating my little pork chop. When he dumped the slops into her bowl, Flora gr gladly grabbed a bite. Wonderful. Biscuits and gravy. Good piggy. You ate everything from yesterday, he said, patting her on the flank. Amos likes a big eater. Flora looked up. If only he knew who the big eaters were around here. Amos wants you to grow fat. So fat, so big, his long arms, which usually hung almost to his knees, were spread wide. Flora plunged her mouth into the slops. She was on her way to getting stronger. Now she needed to get bigger, too. She looked over the top of the bowl, glancing around for what she knew was waiting and watching. Sure enough, as soon as the cook's footsteps faded at the top of the stairs, the three rats slipped out from between the boxes. Whiskers, matted brown fur, impossibly small shiny eyes. Their leader, the one with the ball, with the ball patch, clacked his curvy yellow teeth together. Snap, snap. Taking up the call, the other two clacked their teeth as well. And the ocean of rats she had imagined the day before started coming out of the shadows. <clears throat> Flora swallowed a last mouthful, backed up, and locked her trembling knees. Then the bald rat, Rat King, hissed. It was a terrible sound, worse than the teeth clacking. As soon as he did this, the army of rats swarmed over her food, snarling at one another as they cleaned out her bowl. When it was spotless, they slipped away into the shadows, all except for the king. He crawled back into the bowl, sprawled on his back, and began licking the gravy from his round middle. With every lick, she could see his yellow teeth. She could smell him too. It was a sour smell, and Flora guessed that all the licking in the world wouldn't get that stink out. When he was done, the rat rose up on his hind legs. He opened his mouth and hissed again. Flora tried to step back further, but the collar jammed up under her chin. What did he want now? Thankfully nothing. He waddled away until Amos came downstairs for dinner. Flora got ready to gulp mouthfuls as soon as the slops hit her bowl. While she swallowed quickly 
She kept one eye on the shadows and the other on Amos. Please stay, she thought. But as she took her third bite, he clomped off. This time he was only halfway up the stairs when ears, I'm sorry, let me start that over. Please stay, she thought. But as she took her third bite, he clomped off. This time he only got halfway up the stairs when eyes, ears, and whiskers slipped into the dim light. Flora hurried away, still chewing. This was too big a challenge. One pig against an army of rats didn't seem at all fair. That night in her dreams, naked tails snaked across her body and twisted around her neck, choking her.